Hello, I'm delighted to be here today with Bryn Llewellyn, who does Tagtivate is his business. And I'm really excited to be talking to him about this because this is about combining physical activity and maths, which is something that I'm passionate mm -hmm. about. So hi, Bryn. Welcome. Hello there. Pleased to meet you, albeit on a little screen there. Maybe one day further down the line, we can meet for a proper coffee. That'd be lovely. Well, we've met before at conferences mm -hmm. and so on. So just to give some context for this interview, I don't, I'm not paid to do interviews like this. I do it because it's a passion and I really want to support this aim of integrating maths and physical activity. So what we're going to talk about today is a little bit about Bryn's vision and what he does. And then I'm going to ask him to demonstrate some of the particular activities. So overall, it's kind of like tag rugby, isn't it? Bryn, would you say it like that? Well, initially I thought it was tag rugby, but actually I think it's probably more like TIG or TAG, depending on where you live in the world. The ultimate playground game, meeting, countdown, um, and it's a case of can you blend the mathematics, as you say, with the movement. Um, you can play it with a bit of tag rugby if you want, but um, as I say, TIG or TAG is probably a better description of it. And you've written a lot about the theory of integrating physical activity and learning. Can you tell us a little bit about that? So my background is male in a primary school, you become the PE lead by default. Then you become the deputy head teacher, then the acting head teacher, then back to becoming the deputy head teacher. And then you realize that all you're doing is getting children to pass SATs, whether it's key stage one, key stage two, or phonic screening. So I decided that rather than sitting down doing maths, 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 or sometimes English, 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 it would be a case of can we make the movement uh, more relevant, more active, more fun, which will engage all children, not just certain children. So in terms of writing material, yeah, I write lots and lots of material, not just for tag to eight, but other people as well. So you have two packs of tags, haven't you? One for numeracy and one for phonics and literacy. Is that right? Yeah. So yeah. the idea is that the, the, the schools buy the resources. Uh, the resources come with Velcro belts. They come with uh, upcycled plastic containers, which I think is crucial in terms of sustainability. And shed loads, I mean shed loads, hundreds of colourful tags with odd numbers, even numbers, and operation tags, including more than, less than symbols, brackets so you can get into the realms of algebra. Um, so unlimited opportunities to develop mathematics from early years, key stage one, key stage two, and beyond. So if people go to your website, they're going to see two products for sale on the math side, which is really my passion. One is the premium resources at £725. If you're not in the UK, the dollars and the um, euros would be slightly more, but comparable. Um, and then there's the top up maths tags at £550. So what you've just described, 555 is it? <laughs> uh, so the idea is the some schools want to focus on English, so they buy the tag to eight premium English, and then they supplement that with the top up maths tags, or the other way around, whatever's on the school improvement plan, say maths is on the improvement plan, so they buy the premium version of that and then think, you know what, this is pretty cool, let's see if it'll work for spelling and phonics and uh, comprehension and inference, and they buy the top up tags for English. Yeah. So that one major charge of around £700 gets you everything for maths. The top yeah. up is if you buy, if you've already bought the English and you're then buying the maths, so you can get the maths cheaper if you've already bought the English because you don't have to buy the belts. Is that right? Yeah, yeah that's cool. it. Cool. Okay. So what I really wanted to do was if I was a teacher or a head teacher considering spending that money, I'd like to know a bit more about the activities. I've seen on your website, the kids running around, a sense of the level of energy and the, rug the touch rugby style activity. But could you show me, please, like an early years and activity? Could we start there and then show me some older activities for older children with the maths? What are they like? OK, for example, the um, as I say, the the tags that we have, the reds are all of the uh, 
the even numbers and the yellows are all of the odd numbers and they go right the way from zero to 144. So why do we go to 144? Because it incorporates the 12 times 12. So all schools, the expectation is that we learn all uh, times tables by the end of year four in the UK. Um, so that's why we've got those numbers beyond 100. That said, we realized that if you combine the numbers, you can actually make, you know, uh, three digit numbers and four digit numbers, et cetera. So there you go, 710. Um, so an example of a, a, a foundation stage activity. Yes. Okay. So you can imagine we've put the, uh, we've asked the children to scatter the tags on the floor. So early years, you're going to just choose the numbers zero to 10. So we've got four of each number. So the children scatter the tags and they go to explore the tags. They look at the numbers. Um, they might find a number that they know, do that number of claps, that number of jumps, that number of hops. Um, trying to think in terms of like the one example, one bonkers moment, um, the tags were scattered on the floor. And I asked the children to pick up a tag and take it for a walk. And the children literally took it as walking a dog. So they had their tags and they were walking around, walking the dog. And they were going up to each other saying like, my dog's the same color as your dog. My dog's bigger than your dog. My dog's older than your dog. My dog's the same age as my mum. They go like, probably not, but never mind. So there's an example of just how flexible it is for early years. Maybe you want to extend it in terms of um, tens and ones. So working with a, a school in Edmondsley uh, up in Durham, we had the tags scattered on the floor, zero to 20. And the idea was to find a number that they know and do that number of claps. And there was one girl called India and uh, she came to number 14 and she did one, two. So one ten and four hops. So that was her way of interpreting tens and ones. So then we extended that a little bit further. And then obviously you come to number 32 and it's 10, 20, 30, one, two. So we've got the tags represented on the floor and the children are interpreting the, uh, the, the breakup, the composition of those numbers into actions. Likewise, you can extend it, as I say, into those larger numbers. So we've got oh, probably not a good example. No, actually we'll make it there. So if we've got 710, what does 710 look like? So you give the children ownership and they could actually think of moves for the hundreds. So invariably the children will be doing star jumps for the hundreds and then the claps of the tens and the hops of the ones. And then you extend it even more. So you can take it into four digit numbers. So working with a, a group of children, uh, their interpretation of hundred, sorry, thousands was this. And I was going like, ah, the Mobot. Yeah, yeah. M for millennium and for knowing that an M is always a thousand. Milli is always a thousand. Wow, so I'm learning stuff here. So I was going like, the Mobot. And they went, what's the Mobot? And then I said, Mo Farah. And they went, who's Mo Farah? And then I realized that I'm quite old now. And the child was actually saying, no, it's M as in Roman numerals, which I thought was so cool. Yeah. So there's an example of children taking ownership in terms of how to be yeah. creative with movement. You're picking up on something so important mathematically there. As adults, we assume that children can correctly read the digits in order and mm. understand the place value. And for some children, that's a huge, huge struggle, a mm. massive struggle, because until they're about seven, a lot of children struggle to read digits in order. And then some are still struggling because they've got elements of dyslexia there. And for those children who are struggling to have that extra motivation, I can see that working really, really well. Yeah. just bringing it to life and they're gonna but it's the children who struggle with that or often love their PE yeah, yeah. and it would overcome that yeah. okay. and I do think with having the patterns there children see patterns far far quicker so for example if you put those you know if you stick those tags onto the velcro belt on a washing line they quickly see the pattern between odd even odd even odd even red yellow red yellow red yellow um and again, because, you know, no matter how well prepared you are as a teacher with the most incredible whiteboard presentation going on, um, 
ultimately the children are sitting down looking at a screen but if they're physically active and on a bigger space on a bigger area being able to talk to their their, their friends I think it just opens up the conversation and the dialogue yeah, it gives them a multi-sensorial experience of the number. Now, we know in early years that's essential for most children's learning, but for a lot of children, they need it longer than that. Generally, your children who are struggling. So it's your children who are struggling, who I think you're going to see making those key steps forward with this, that there's, it's just so hard for them. I have a book over there, Jane McGonigal, um, on games and how children learn through games in ways they would never otherwise learn and it's true sometimes you can just make huge leaps in your learning if you're playing games that you wouldn't otherwise make so that's those two things going on the multi-sensorial experience and the game combination and then of course you're getting the benefit of the physical activity in its own right which we want the children to have yeah. Have you got one or two more activities leading towards the older children that you'd suggest? For the older children, again, with those those tags, just as simple as, you know, they're, they're moving around the hall or the floor space in different ways. And then you say, right, um, odd one out, which means they get into groups of three, odd one out. And they look at their numbers and they work out which is the odd one out and why. So they could determine in terms of mine's the odd one out because it's the only prime number mine's the odd one out because it's the only one with a double digit mine's the odd one out because it's the only one that's a factor of whatever and it's gorgeous just in terms of you know the the openness and the versatility and the opportunities to share what they know or maybe something that they don't know so the teacher assumes they know what they think you know the, the teacher assumes that they know it but ultimately can they apply it and I think that's the beauty of the tag to fate session in terms of like you're learning your facts, but it's about the application and the ability to discuss and um, to question it as well. You know, you ask the question, what happens if? And they look at the numbers and they can get the mini whiteboards out and the pens out. And it's working with with their friends that really benefits it. It's about it's genuine, genuinely a collaborative approach to learning. I love that. In. there's so much in that that's really helpful children thinking organically from themselves having to listen to others and work out what others are saying children teach each other much better than mm. we can teach them when they're properly engaged yeah and the, the thing is in terms of like everybody says you've got to demonstrate impact and so we, you know we've had research done by um dr andy daly smith who was then at uh, Leeds Beckett University, and that demonstrated impact in terms of speed and accuracy for addition and subtraction, which was great. And those children who took part in the tag to fix session compared to the control group who were sat down doing the same maths objectives, but in a, in a more traditional setting and more traditional format, those children who took part in the active learning session, there were marginal gains there. And this was like a gold standardized, you know, randomized control trial. But those sub substantial gains, if they become repeated over time, they become, you know, you know, those marginal gains become substantial over time, don't they? Yeah, For I can me, see that. You've word. got the evidence in terms of the speed and the accuracy, and you've got increased levels of physical activity. But to me, you don't need to measure, you just need to look. And when you see the energy levels and when you see this the smiles on the children's faces and that collaboration that teamwork you know they grab a tag they run back they put it in the bucket they high five their friend that to me is the, the the magic you don't necessarily need to measure speed and accuracy you just need to count the smiles or look at the smiles yeah well for some teachers who are thinking of buying the product they'd love the justification of the research in order to convince those who control the purse strings and I did see all that's on your website. So if anyone's looking for that, I recommend them looking there. Mm. Um, one last thing, if a school decides they want some professional development mm. to go alongside that, if they want you to come into school and demonstrate things, or if they want to chat to you online, is that possible? Yeah, as I say, the um, the face-to-face -face stuff, the activity days, followed by the after-school CPD sessions, they're all there. 
This week I was working with Parklands Primary School in Leeds. I do a weekly session with them because they are just down the road from me. Uh, I was also working locally with a school in Bradford. Uh, yeah, Wednesday, I'm working with them again later on this term. Um, and then next week I'm working with five schools in five days in the delights of Staines uh, out towards west of London as part of um, Maths Week England. Um, yeah, I travel here, there and everywhere. Those schools that I can't get to in person, um, we can do some online training with uh, Zoom or Skype or Google Hout, whichever is your preferred platform. And the idea then is to do some bite-sized, drip-fed uh, training sessions to get you um, confident to take that learning beyond the classroom yeah. either into the hall or onto the playground so yeah so you listen as a, as a former school leader and as a former teacher I know the problems the difficulties the priorities that we have to juggle but um, I'm more than happy to work around your needs and your your wants so uh, I guess last question is how are you dealing with international training would you be prepared to go overseas uh, I've been really lucky in terms of actually being able to go and work with schools in Australia and Finland. Uh, on the back of the Finnish schools, we had some orders from schools in Argentina. Um, and again, the training for there was done online. But um, yeah, yeah, anything's possible. OK, thank you so much for making the time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. And good luck with everything you're doing. I'm thank working you. on um, doing interventions in schools at the minute. And the only class that children aren't allowed to miss to come to me is PE. Okay. And, and that's because the children insist they want their PE. And I could just really see how this would work to complement it all. So I really to say, if you, if you want to have a look at the website and look at the video clips and look at the TEDx talk, you know, it's all there. It's, as you say, we have the research. Yeah, that yeah. backs everything up. But to me, it's about the smiles. It's the enjoyment. And just to finish off, one little comment from a boy in Leicestershire, Ethan, aged five, at the end of the active learning session, he came up to me, smile on his face, sweat on his forehead. And he just said to me, you know, I used to think I was rubbish at maths, but now I know I'm not. That's it. That's what it's Great, about. isn't it? That's what I'm getting in my interventions, just turning kids around. It's the most satisfying thing ever, really. So rewarding. So I'll just leave you now with some links to some of Bryn's videos for Tag Debate and a couple of my other interviews. Thanks for watching. Please do subscribe. Bye for now.